Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Golden Harvest Community Church. Hope that you're all having a wonderful weekend. Let's start in prayer. Dear Father, we thank you for your Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for him coming in and being with us today. We thank you for your Holy Spirit who guides us, directs us and rebukes us. And we ask that you open up our eyes and our ears in the spirit and give us revelation to your message today. This mighty message that we are going to put into play, that we are going to be able to help others with. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So, today's topic, be transformed. Woohoo! I certainly needed it. Um, when I was younger, I used to see myself as useless, as stupid, ugly, good for nothing, and not good enough. And I also believed that no one could love me and that I wasn't worth anything. And I was lonely, and that was my biggest fear. I was hurting inside, I didn't know why. And I was bitter towards family, friends, and the whole world. Just, was just quite consuming. Now I don't know where all these thoughts came from, why I had them. It was possibly from being bullied at school, from um, and then becoming a bully to some people who I saw that were inferior to me. And I apologise to those people because that's not the person I want to be. But I needed a massive, massive transformation. And unfortunately, that transformation did not come for many, many years later. But today we're going to be looking at Be Transformed. That's our topic for today. And just bear with me, I'm trying to manoeuvre two computers. I'm going to do a Pastor Dean. <laughs> So we need to change the way that we think, the way that we um, say things, what we're putting out. Our words are so powerful um, and they do create what's happening in our world. So we really need to transform every little bit about us, but we can't do it on our own. Now, our major scripture for today is Romans 12.2. And I'm predominantly reading out of the New King James. Um, and it goes like this. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, the word conformed, means assuming a similar outward form or of expression by following the same pattern, mould or model. So you're coming into agreement with whoever it is that's influencing you. So even if you're on your own, if you have a certain way of doing or saying or acting, it's pretty much because you want somebody to like you. There's, I don't know too many people that are really self-assured and know who they are. Most people, and I used to do this as I, when I was younger, I used to change the way I acted and talked with the people I was around because I had so many diverse groups that I would get around with that I could change even the way I talk, the way things came out, um, I changed to be like that person. Some would say that that's a compliment to that person, but it's certainly not a compliment to me. Um, and do not be conformed, so don't come into agreement with what's going on in the world or in this age. That word world there is another word for that or some other um, 
translations use the word age, which is probably more correct, I would think, um, because this age is, is about talking about what's happening now in this time and what's going on around us at this present time. So we don't want to come into agreement or conform to what is going on in the world because if you've ever looked outside your window it is not good so you know and if your life's going down the gurgler well there's a reason for that and we don't want to conform to that but be transformed now that word transformed the greek word is metamorpho which is where we get the word metamorphosis from so it's that it's a, a change after being with is what meta means and morphu is taking on the form that properly embodies a particular inner essence and it means to form to fashion to shape and to mold which is what the potter does the potter molds you and shapes you doesn't it that's God. He, he's, he's the potter. We're the clay. Okay? And he's molding us all the time. We are being transformed, shaped, and moved around and made into different things. Sorry, I've just realized that's not up there. So you can follow it. So be transformed. So we want to be trans, transformed, transfigured. Is another word that it means by the renewing of your mind Woo renewing means to change it's a change of heart it's to change your life make it brand new and your mind is a part of your soul And it's the God-given capacity of each person to think for themselves and to reason. So we, we need to be able to use our mind in a way that's in accordance to what God wants us to, to think and do and how he wants us to be and how to fulfill what he wants for our lives. The best transformation ever, I can tell you now. That you may prove what is that. I'm going to stop there because I want to go on to prove. So you want to try, you want to test to show something is acceptable, that it's real, and that it's approved. You want to prove what you're doing is right. You want to prove that things are good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So those things that are good, the Greek word for that is agathos and it's inherently, intrinsically good. Now if you don't know what intrinsically means, it means small. It's intrinsically good as to the believer. acceptable it's well pleasing it's gratifying because fully you want it to be fully acceptable you want no doubt you just want it to be acceptable and perfect will of god teleos is the greek word for perfect and it means mature, consummated from going through the necessary stages to reach the end goal. Developed into a cons consummating completion by fulfilling the necessary process like your spiritual journey. We want to be in the perfect will of God. We want to be his form of perfect, not our form of perfect. 
because our form of perfect, it keeps moving guideposts all the time and we never ever seem to reach them. Because as soon as we get there, oh no, the guidepost is almost mo all, all but moved. To be a perfectionist is not, is not a good thing. It's actually classed as sin. So you don't want the human form of perfect because you will never ever get there. And that is what I believe made me very, very depressed. Because I kept moving my guide, my my goal, uh, goal posts. Every time I thought I was close to perfect, all of a sudden the goal post got further away. But God's kind of perfect, because we can never be as perfect as Him. And I now say, if you're perfect, you'd be up there with Him. Because there's no such thing as perfect. But God's will is perfect. In him. Yay. <laughs> 1 Peter 1 13 through 15. Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace of this is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ as obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lusts as in your ignorance, but as he who called you in holy, you also be holy in your conduct. Gird up. I had to look this up because I just thought that was just a really different way of saying things, but it's getting ready or being prepared to move quickly. So gird up the loins of your mind where someone needs to go and arrive at without delay. Tighten your belt. So in other words, put a restraint on your mind about what you're thinking and, and, and what you're going to put into action. Okay, it's it's taking control of your thoughts and the way that you think and say things. Be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. What's that revelation? That Jesus died on the cross for you and me and he took all of our sins and our illnesses and iniquities to hell and left them there. He paid the price for us. He loves us that much. And we are children of God. We are a brother or a sister with Jesus. So where's your problem? <laughs> What's your problem? We don't have one. Be transformed. It's um, We need to... Not conform yourself to the former lusts as in your ignorance. Okay? If you don't know about something, go and research it. Don't be ignorant about it. Make sure when you're having a discussion with somebody that you really know what you're talking about. That you're on the mark, that you've got the right words and you can put it out there in the right way so that you're not leading somebody down the garden path. You know, how many times has, um, have you been in a conversation with somebody and you think you're right, but it's actually the other person? I hope my, my daughter and husband don't watch this because I always think I'm right. 99.9% .9 of the time I am, but there is that one time that I'm not. Psalms 51.10 Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Steadfast means to be firm, unshakable, A 
clean heart. Again, we're talking about that soul, yeah? And the Passion Translation says it like this, Create a new clean heart within me. Fill me with pure thoughts and holy desires, ready to please you. And we're talking about God. We want to please him. He's the only person that matters or that should matter in our lives. When we make those changes in our lives, our spirit gets stronger and wants to stay connected to the vine. And how do we do that? It's by delving into the word. Read your Bibles. We need to be transforming it every day, the way we think and the way that we think about ourselves because we need to build ourselves up and not to be um, prideful but to be humble, to realise that we are no better than our next door neighbour. We are no better than our brothers or sisters that we live with at home. That we are all equal. Doesn't matter what nationality you are, where you come from, what town you live in, what's, what country you come from. We are all equal. Ephesians 4, 21 through 24. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, who are we talking about? We're talking about Jesus. As the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. Now, who's the old man? The old man is, is the old you, the you that used to be before you gave your life to Christ. Okay, that's who we're talking about. The old man is the old you. You are no longer that person. All the things that you'd done back then, all, all of... Um, your thoughts and everything are no longer yours. They're, they're gone. They're the old man. Verse 23. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man which was created according to God. Hallelujah. To, in true righteousness and holiness. So that you are now your new man. Your old man is gone. Close the door. Shut him out. You don't want him back. I don't, I don't want me back. The old me. Yeah. Not a good, good, um, good thought. Not that I was an overly bad person, but I wasn't the best person I could be either. And that's what we want to be. We want to live in accordance to God in true righteousness and holiness. So do you understand who the old man, the new man is? Yeah? Mm -hmm. So we're moving on. 2 Corinthians 3.18 But we all, with unveiled faces, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Unveiled faces. So remember, Moses' face shone while he was talking to God. And when he came down off Mount Sinai, he would put a veil over his face because he didn't want to frighten the masses down at the bottom of the mountain. So when I think of this this scripture, I think about the changes in me that I've experienced and it's like being the light on the, or the lamp on the lampstand. You don't want to hide it. You don't want the veil over your face. You want to be that person in somebody's dark place or even a room of darkness where people are just so consumed in their own self-worth and they're just out for themselves. They don't care about anybody else. 
you know there's no there's no respect there's no there's no caring about another person is there anymore it just seems like everybody's out for themselves it no longer is a village bringing up a family it's now the parent bringing up their child and if mrs jones up the street goes crook on their their child for doing something wrong then the parents on the doorstep are abusing the lady that's just stopped their child from falling out of a tree and breaking their arm because they shouldn't have been in a tree in the first place. I mean, these are all things that we did as kids and got away with, but because we did have those people looking out for us and they were allowed to rebuke us when we were being naughty because we were brought up by a village and I'm glad that I was one of those that was in the era of the village bringing us up, not just a single parent. But we need to be able to be that person that can walk into a room of darkness and shine that light so that people are attracted to us and that we can give them what we've got. It's to be shared. You don't put the veil over it, you lift it off. You become somebody's light in their darkness and help them through. And it's a pretty cool feeling. It feels pretty, you can even feel it within, the transformation within you, the peace that is inside of you. And when we spend, spend that time in the Word, we start to brighten up, we start to shine. And it comes from inside out. Okay, people don't even recognize why you look so different. You don't look any different. I always think when I watch Joyce Meyer on, um, on TV, watching her preachings that she does, how young she looks. And the other day she actually declared that she was almost 80 years old. I was in shock. I thought she was in her 60s. She is just, looks amazing for her age. She doesn't even have any mobility problems. And that is truly because the amount of time she spends in the word, preaching, sharing the love of God with everybody and helping people. So that's how our transformation comes. Matthew 17, 2 and 3. Now after six days, Jesus took Peter, James and John, his brother and, and his brother, and uh, let's start that again now after six days jesus took peter james and john his brother led them up on a high mountain by themselves and he was transfigured he being jesus was transfigured before them his face shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as the light wow now, if Jesus goes from being a mere mortal man, a man that was born in a stable, was placed in a manger, with the most humblest and humblest of, of beginnings, and was brought up by his mum and his dad, Joseph, and then starts, he only gets three years in his ministry. And he changes from a human being into the spirit, the, the deity of who he is and where he came from and where he's going. And it does tell us in the Bible that we are to be like him. He is our example. What he does, we can do. And that is the best example of how we should look with that bright light. After all of our struggles, Jesus walked this earth and he must have cried every time he went up to pray. And he always went up on a mountain. And why did he do that? To get closer to God, maybe? To be alone? 
thinking nobody else would climb the steep hill. I don't know. It's just what he did. It's what, where he wanted to be. And he's got three men who get to witness his transformation. And in time, they get their own transformation. But it's like the story of the butterfly, the caterpillar. Everyone looks at a caterpillar and thinks that it's ugly and that they don't want to touch it or anything. But as soon as it's transformed into that beautiful butterfly, then people want to look at it and they're amazed by it, of its beauty. Particularly when it's got nice bright colours. You know, we look at it and we just are totally transformed into the wonder of how such an ugly looking caterpillar can become such a beautiful thing. So if a caterpillar can do it, don't you think you can? Because I believe you can. He believes you can. Because he knows you can. He knows what's written in your book. He knows you better than you know you. Psalms 104, verse 2. Who cover yourself with light as with a garment, who stretch out the heavens like a curtain. Don't cover yourself over. Don't hide in the backdrops away from everybody. Stand up, move forward, shine. Let your light be seen. We need more light in this world. We need the transformation that God can give us willingly. He gives it to us. It's like it's handed to us on a silver platter. We just have to take it and say thank you. It's all we have to do. Well, there's a lot more that we have to do, but <laughs> it's a good start, isn't it? So... Let's do it. Titus 3, 5. He saved us. Woohoo! Not because of any works or righteousness that we had done, mm -mm. but because of his own pity and mercy by the cleansing bath of the new birth, regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. That's of the Amplified Classic. How good is that? He saved us. Not because of anything we've done. We've done nothing. Okay, people get around and think people are so good because, oh, they're a good person. You know, they'll help so-and-so and they'll do this and they'll do that. And yes, that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to be good to other people. He wants us to help other people. But he wants us to do it in his likeness, not for our own glory, but for his glory. And that's where the transformation comes from, is when you know that everything that you do doesn't come from you. You didn't make it happen. He did. He's the one that set up the divine appointment for you to see somebody that needed help. He's the one that get put the words in your mouth and helped you to to get that person to see that they they are loved and they are accepted and they are beautiful and they they have a father in heaven who loves them and that there is a better life for them we need to be renewed and the holy spirit helps us to do that And I know it's hard at times when you're sitting there and you're not feeling the best and you may have done some things wrong. And the hardest thing is to pick that Bible up. If you can't sit there and read it, put it on your phone. Turn it on. Let it talk to you. Let it wash over you. Let it get rid of all of the distress and the feelings that are boiling inside of you. 
because I can tell you now, the last thing I want to do, I don't like reading. I hate reading. It's not my thing. But I do love to listen to the Bible and I even listen to it as I sleep. It's pretty amazing to do. And it's a wonderful thing to, to have it on in the house as you're doing your housework or homework or whatever it is you do at home and just listen to it. It's like listening to the radio. You fade in and out. There's things that the Lord will will highlight to you. Your hearing will come in when it needs to hear something. And then you go running for your Bible to look at it in the Bible and to mark it because you want to be able to find it one day when you really need it. It's handy. It's a good way to do things. Romans 7.23, this is the Passion Translation. But I discern another power operating in my humanity, waging a war against the moral principles of my conscience and bringing me into captivity as a prisoner to the law of sin, this unwelcome intruder in my humanity. Whew. We need to change the way we think. Stop thinking sinful thoughts and what is better and what we think we can and can't do and what we're going to get out of things. Verse 25 gives us a bit of a solution. I give all my thanks to God, amen, for his mighty power has finally provided a way out through our Lord Jesus, the Anointed One. So if left to myself, the flesh is aligned with the law of sin. But now my renewed mind is fixed on and submitted to God's righteous power, righteous principles, sorry. <laughs> Woohoo! So if you don't continue to renew your mind, you're not going to find your way through. Not to the point where you're not reliving it all the time. Have you ever done that? You've had a problem, you think you've solved it, and next minute it gets worse. I know as a massage therapist, people will hurt themselves and they don't go to anybody and get some work done on it to, to get it back to its optimal range of mo movement. So say you've got a limp, say you've rolled your ankle. It's probably a bad example because you can't really do much there because if you stretch the ligaments, but if you hurt yourself and you don't go and get a massage or you go to a chiropractor or a physio or, or a um, exercise physiologist or anyone that can help you to regain the range of movement of your muscle or muscles, then what happens is the next time you injure it, that range of movement gets less and less until you start to your whole body starts to distort and go out of out of shape. So you need to get in there and rub it out because the the more you keep that injury and the layers and layers and layers and layers of injury that come, then distort everything and make it harder. Until one day you get to the point and you just can't handle the pain anymore and you're ringing up and you're like, I need an appointment today and it's, I've got nothing. And my attitude is, well, if you had have done it six weeks ago, six months ago, six years ago, when you first did the injury, you wouldn't be like this today. So it's not that I don't care, I do care and I, I really, really hate seeing anybody in pain but you need to help yourself. You need to keep renewing. You need to keep that maintenance up. You need to keep going back to the word and reading it and washing your body with it and, and getting your mind renewed every day. Every day. Every time you're in conflict, you need to get back into that word. It's a fact what we need to do. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Be anxious for nothing, 
but in everything by prayer and supplication for thanks, with thanksgiving. Always be thankful to the Lord when you pray. You'll get your prayers answered. Let your requests be made known to God because if you don't ask, you won't receive. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Those of you that suffer anxiety, there's your antidote. There's the biggest pill, the best pill you will ever, ever be given. Make your petition to God. He knows what you need before you've even asked. So all he needs you to do is ask because he's not going to intrude in on your life if you don't allow him to. He will sit back and be a bystander and watch. Just like a security guard, he'll sit there waiting for you to say, act. You know, security guards sit back in the, in the rafters and they just survey what's going on around the room. And they act when they need to. But God will act when he is invited in and you allow him to do what he needs to do in you. And that's when the transformation comes, is when you ask for help. It makes you the stronger person, believe it or not. Most people say, if you ask, you're not strong. Eh, sorry, I don't agree with that. The strongest person is that person that is able to say, help me, please, Lord. Give me a hand up. I can't get up these steps without you. Philippians 2, 5 through 7. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in likeness of men. So we are to be like Christ. And you're not a forgery if you are like Christ. At all. That is what you are put here to be and to do. Is to do the will of God on earth until it's your time to go home and be with him. Just like Jesus. Jesus walked this earth. He healed the, the lepers. He cast out the demons. And he gave hope to the world. He gives hope to you. He gives hope to me every day if we allow him. One John four one, beloved, do not believe every spirit. No, but test the spirits, whether they are of good of God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Now this is what prove is about. We need to approve what is in our lives. We need to know that in the spirit, is it from God or is it from the devil? Because if it's from the devil, eh, we don't want it. Back off. Not welcome. Shut the door. But open the door to Jesus because he's out there knocking and he wants you to let him in. But you have to approve who's going to be in your life. Are you going to come into agreement with Satan or are you going to come into agreement with our Heavenly Father who loves us and who puts peace in our heart? And that's how you know which spirit is in your life. If you have 
destruction, turmoil, anger, grief in your life, that's the enemy. But if you have peace, understanding, joy, love, and that's the transformation. Take the negative out, put the positive in. God's there. He's going to be there every minute of your day. And it is powerful. It is the biggest transformation. I even gave testimony um, at our combined service a couple of weeks ago about what God has done in my life. And for me, it is the, the transformation of the peace inside of me when there is something going on in my life that I have no control over. You know, those phone calls that come that you've got a sick loved one or, you know, there's been an accident and somebody's been hurt or, you know, even the devastation of what's going on in, in Yagara and Echuca and all those towns that are flooding right now and people are losing homes. Not so long ago, people were losing homes to fires. Now we're losing them to water. There's all the elements of, the, of, the, of what the world is about, isn't it? And it's just devastating. But the peace that is inside of me, knowing that God is going to make a way, he's going to make a provision in amongst all of that destruction, which is the devil. And sometimes it's you because you've come into agreement. And it's not the devil, it's just you because you've been stupid enough to go, yeah, okay, let's do this. But when God's inside of you and he is your strength, he is your comforter, you just react differently. And I have noticed the difference in me. I've had my dad have a four heart operations this year you know and I know God's got it I know God's going to make him get him through so that he can come to Christ and that he gets to go to heaven when it's his turn to die but he doesn't die because he goes to eternal life in heaven and I want that for my dad I want that for everybody listening everybody out there I want you all to experience that peace that joy, it's miraculous. I can't do it. Man, if I was a, if I was a messy room, and that's how I can explain what I was like. My, my, I was a mess inside. It was like walking into a room that you couldn't see anything on the no floor. It was all just junk. That's my whole life. But now... It's a nice, tidy room that you can walk in and see the floor. Everything's in its place. Everything's clean and tidy. It's the best way I can show you. And that's come through knowing Christ and knowing why things are happening in my life. Because if I go and sin, I've just opened that door to the enemy. So we have choices. And we can make the transformation. We make it with or without him. But I tell you what, you will be the brightest light in your town or in your, your home if you allow God to help you. Because he's awesome. Best thing ever. Best pill you'll ever take. Galatians 6, four Amplified Classic. But let every person carefully scrutinize and examine and test his own conduct. Yeah. You need to be looking at yourself and his own work. Are you proud of what you're putting out there? He can then have the person sanctification and joy of doing something commendable in itself alone without resorting to boastful comparison with his neighbor we should be doing things for people because we want to do them not because we want to be paid back 
not because we want something bigger and better. We should be looking at the way we do things and the way we, we act in front of people or around people. And are we proud of that? Because if you can't be proud of you, then what's God going to be like with you? And we want his recommendation, his love, his peace. So don't go out and do things for people if you think that you need to be repaid. Do it because God wants you to do it and he is your rewarder. God is the one that rewards us. Trust me. It's bountiful. It's huge what you get back if you just do it for God's glory and not in your own steam, not in your own, for your own pride, not to make yourself somebody bigger and better. Matthew 25, 21. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. If you can't be trusted with something little, how can you be trusted with it all? You need to be able to start at the bottom. It's like being the cleaner. Your first job as a cleaner and then you become the CEO of the business. Everybody's got to start at the bottom. You want that good and faithful servant. It's like that stamp when you're a little kid that your school teacher used to give you on your hand or wherever, on your school book. Didn't it make you feel good? It's the same thing. You get that acknowledgement from God to say, good and faithful servant, now that I can trust you with this, I can trust you with something bigger and better. That's how it works. We are to be inherently, intrinsically good. Which is what good means. Agathos. I'm slowly learning these Greek words. See? The more you study it, the more they come. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. I remember when I was... Um, learning massage and you know there's so many we had to learn all the all the names of the muscles i had no idea how to say half of them until i worked out the o so the o in anatomy is the word that binds two words together or three words together sterno cloido mastoid three words sternum cloido clavicle Mastoid, mastoid process. You put them all together, it becomes one word. It's a muscle in your neck. And it's talking about the, um, the attachment sites, where the muscle attaches to, what bones it attaches to, and it becomes the muscle. But I had to start with little words like glutes and make it bigger. So as I learnt... I got into it more. Hopefully that will help somebody. I know it will. Luke 6, 45. A good man out of the good treasures of his heart brings forth good. Amen. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. We do not want to put out bad stuff because whatever you put out is what you get back. If 
you want good things and we all want to be treated the way we treat others or we should or want to be want to do that Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Your words come back to you. They are not void. Leopard does change its spots. <laughs> so whatever you say, whatever you're putting out, if you're going out and you're complimenting people, telling them they look nice, I did that to a lady the other day and she was, just. I just said, her lights turned on. She looked amazing and just commented as she was crossing the road and all of a sudden she shone. The shine that came out of her, the glow, was wonderful. And it helps to make you feel good too. Good that you made somebody feel good inside. And that's what it's about. We don't want to be kicking people when they're down. We want to build them up. Yes and amen. Yes, we do. Hebrews 13, 20 through 21. Now may the God of peace, who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you complete in every good work to do his will. Whose will? God's will working in you what is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. We are acceptable. Jesus is the one that shows us exactly how to be accepted, how we should act how we should treat people. Jesus didn't have a sick day in his life, but he sure did heal a lot of people. And sometimes we go through things to be able to understand what other people are going through. That we need to do God's will, his way, to receive the, the reward of acceptance. There's nothing worse than not knowing who you are and not feeling accepted in your own life, in your circle, in your world. Been there, done that. I know what it's like. And I tell you, this is such a better way to be accepted. I do care about people. I care about people immensely. I wouldn't be a massage therapist if I didn't. But being a child of God is more important to me than anything else. And I hope it's important to you too. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perf perfect and complete lacking nothing. Your transformation will start when you let those the transformation begin. I was the most impatient person ever. <laughs> wow. Yeah, forgot about that. I expected when I said something that it would be done like that but I tell you what God gets you to <laughs> really knows how to make you realize that it's not about your timing it's about his timing and when we think things should happen it usually doesn't because God has a plan and he's got to get all the ducks in a row ready orchestrated ready to go he's got to find the people who will hear his voice and act on it. And sometimes that takes a lot of people. B 
being accepted is part of the transformation to know that you are accepted that you deserve to transform into the beautiful butterfly from the ugly caterpillar Yes and amen. So bringing us back to Romans 12 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Because you are accepted. You are going to be able to discern what is good against bad or evil. And we are going to do the perfect will of God because that's our calling. That is who we are. That is what we do. And the transformation to become the light on the lampstand, the lamp on the lampstand the city on the hill the one that shines the brightest out there for everyone to see remove that veil and shine shine in everybody else's darkness and help them to change help them to be who they are meant to be And if you're not ready to do that, then start praying for holy boldness and the Lord will give it to you. And one day you'll be talking to someone and something will come out of your mouth and you won't even know where it came from. It didn't come from you. It came from the Holy Spirit. So if you want to start your transformation, I'm going to invite you to say this little prayer. You're allowed to say it in your own words. Make it your own. And it's really good if you're at home watching this alone. It's really good that you let us know so that we can rejoice with the angels and everyone in heaven that you have come to the Lord. So say these words after me. Dear God, I believe Jesus is your son and he died on the cross for me. He bore all, all of my sins, taking them to hell, and he rose again. Jesus, come into my heart as I take up my cross and follow you for the rest of my days. Amen. Amen and amen. Now, if you've just prayed that prayer, I really encourage you to reach out to us or to another church and let us know that you've prayed it so that we can help you to transform into the child of God that you are meant to be because it's pretty awesome and congratulations if you did pray that prayer now today is our last live stream from Golden Harvest Community Church but next week is a combined service with Lake Faith Church in Lake Angelico with Pastor Paul and he is doing the service it will be um, put up on Facebook but we will have to share it later in the day so um, I hope that um, you get to see that because I, it'll be another powerful message from Pastor Paul and we will make sure that you get it one way or another. And I hope that you get to enjoy and to celebrate Jesus' birthday with style, with grace, with peace in your heart, with unity within your families, And I will see you, I think it's about the 8th of January, I'm back because I'm going to actually take a little bit of time off 
which I don't normally do over Christmas, but I am this year to spend some time with my family. So God bless each and every one of you. I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful Christmas and all the best for 2023. I hope it's with the Lord transforming your life into the beautiful butterfly that you are meant to be. So I wish you all well and I'll see you next year. That sounds really weird. God bless everyone. Goodbye.